Now in genetic factors, let's come to some of the family studies. Family studies have shown, you know, yes, genes may play a role. Genetic factors may be responsible for these delusional disorders. So family studies have shown that there is increased prevalence of delusional disorder and related personality traits such as suspiciousness, jealousy, secretiveness that has been in, seen to be an increased prevalence in relatives of delusional disorder probands. So patient having delusional disorder, it has been seen that in his relatives, these delusional disorders, these traits are seen in increased prevalence. So again, this is showing that yes, genes do play a role in delusional disorder. But when we compare it with, you know, link with other psychotic disorders such as schizophrenia or with mood disorders, when we see, is there any link? It is seen that, you know, it has failed to identify strong genetic links between delusional disorder and schizophrenia and even mood disorders. So, you know, again, we know that delusional disorders are rarer than schizophrenia. Also, when we talk about uh, the prevalence in females, again, the prevalence is in female is less pronounced as compared to prevalence in females in mood disorders. So, it is seen that there is not much of strong genetic link between delusional disorder and these disorders. So, neither we see any increased incidence of schizophrenia and mood disorders in families of delusional disorder probands. So, this is again one finding which is telling us that the link may be very weak. Nor we see any increased incidence of delusional disorder in families of probands of schizophrenia. So, again, these studies are telling us that the link between delusional disorder and schizophrenia seem to be very weak. But yes, we have talked about the delusional disorders may occur in probands, you know, relatives. So, there is genetic link, of course, may be seen with delusional disorders. Now, let's talk about the biological factors. Now, in the biological factors, again, there is a wide range of non-psychiatric medical conditions, substances and, you know, some of the conditions which have clear-cut biological factors. It is seen that many of these many of these conditions can cause delusions. So, yes, delusions have a biological cause. In fact, when we see that neurological conditions which are most associated with delusions, usually they affect the limbic system as well as the basal ganglia. So, these are two important areas which are implicated in delusion. So, a patient having, you know, delusions many a times in a non-psychiatric condition, these may be the areas which may cause delusion. In fact, it is seen that neurological conditions which are most associated with delusions and without any intellectual impairment, they usually have complex delusions, which is very similar to delusions which we see in delusional disorder. We'll talk about, you know, in the clinical features, what type of delusions are seen. So it is seen that patients having these non-psychiatric conditions with normal, normal cognition, they usually have complex delusions. While patients with impaired intellectual abilities usually have simple delusions. So, thus what we can derive is that delusional disorders may involve limbic system or basal ganglia in patients who have intact cerebral cortical functioning. So, again limbic system and basal ganglia are being seen to be important areas which may be associated with delusions. So, again, this is an important biological factor. Now, another biological factor or hypothesis for delusional disorder is that these delusional disorders may arise as a normal response to abnormal experiences in the environment or in the nervous system, that is the central or the peripheral nervous system. So, patient may have hallucinatory like experiences that needs to be explained. So, they may interpret the or misinterpret the experiences in the environment or in the nervous system erroneously and they may subsequently may develop a delusion. For example, let us say there is a humming noise in the background or there is some noise in the environment of the person which he, you know, erroneously he interprets it or misinterpret as someone's footsteps. So, person may start experiencing that someone is following him. So, because though there are some hallucinatory-like experiences 
and subsequently he may start believing that somebody is following him somebody wants to kill him so delusions may form like this so this is one other hypothesis which has been proposed for development of delusional disorders now let's talk about some of the important psychodynamic theories now many psychodynamic theories have been proposed you know leading to delusional disorders so let's talk about some important contributions one of the important contribution comes from sigmund freud so freud one of the major contribution of freud is that he demonstrated that role of projection is important in formation of delusional disorder so what is projection projection is projecting one own inner conflicts or impulses onto someone else so freud said that projection is an important defense mechanism which plays a role in development of these delusions so let's try to understand what is the hypothesis how projection leads to development of these delusions so the persecutory delusions which occur in the person they basically so it is hypothesized that they basically occur to pro, to be you know as a protective psychological response these occur as a protective psychological response to the conflicts which are representing threats to the self so because of inner conflicts such as you know there is fear of unknown or some of you know freud also explained you know homosexual tendencies they may you know be defended by some of the defenses such as denial or projection so basically it's a protective psychological response to the inner conflicts and what happens subsequently is that it leads to affective withdrawal the person is withdrawn from the you know from the close family members close friends and the person also uses defensive mechanisms such as projection so that he could normalize the situation so what he tries to do he tries to project his own inner conflicts onto others so this is one defense which he used but since it continues to occur and at an extreme level what happens is these defenses they fail to decrease the anxiety for some time they may be able to control anxiety but ultimately they are not able to control anxiety and ultimately leads to maladaptive behavior or maladaptive state of the person ultimately leading to formation of delusional disorder so this is one important hypothesis which has been proposed by freud now let's talk about another important psychodynamic factor another important contribution given by norman cameron now norman cameron proposed or he described that there may be certain situations in fact he gave seven situations according to him which may favor development of delusional disorder so let's try to understand some of these situations which he described so norman cameron he described that patient may develop delusions or delusional disorders when in situations there is increased expectation of receiving sadistic treatment in those situations the person may develop delusional disorders in situations of social isolation the person can develop delusional disorders in situations when there is increase envy jealousy is there in such situation someone is jealous of the colleague jealous of the neighbors in such situation again there is increase of delusional disorder increasing distress suspicion situation in which you know distress is increased or there is suspicion then also delusions can develop situations which lower self esteem you know again somebody is being bullied somebody is being criticized you know by others by family members those situations also it can lead to delusional disorder situations causing person to see his own defects in others in those situation also the person may develop delusional disorders and in situations with increased potential for ruminations over probable meanings or motivations in those situations also person can develop delusional disorder so these are some important situations which cameron described can lead to development of delusional disorder so let's try to understand how these situations can lead to development of these delusions and also one very important concept which was described by cameron which you should know so he described that frustration from these situations you know and in fact sometimes a combination of these situations may occur which can lead to frustration and which exceeds the tolerable limits and subsequently it leads to the person becomes withdrawn the person becomes anxious 
and subsequently the person realizes that there is something is wrong and he tries to you know explain the problem he tries to find an explanation to what is wrong and subsequently that as a solution so as a solution it ultimately forms or it crystallizes a delusional system so this is basically what is being proposed so you know person having you know in these situations which cameron described and he is not able to tolerate the frustration and ultimately leads to delusion in these situations so this is one very important concept which he described now elaboration of delusion when the person would try to elaborate the delusion again it is important it would include attribution of hostile motivation of both real so he would see or he would feel that the people around him are hostile the people around him are you know are against him or want to harm him so such thoughts may occur but not just with the real people also sometimes it may also include imagined person so people who are not actually there in the reality but he starts imagining these people and these hostilities are attributed to these people so person you know may start thinking that there are people in his you know office who are against him who want to harm him and then there may also be certain imaginative people which are not there in reality that may also be a part of his delusion that those people are against him they are following him such type of thoughts or such type of delusions may occur which subsequently results in organization of what is known as pseudo community again a very very important what is known as pseudo community a very important concept which was given by cameron so again one should know this concept of pseudo community basically it's a community of a perceived community of plotters so person has you know these people in this pseudo community you know which may have real people and imagined people which he feels which he thinks that they want to harm him or they are plotting against him this is pseudo community now what is the role of pseudo community in this you know is delusions or how does this explain its delusions so in pseudo community it binds the projected fear so person knows that these are the people against him it justifies patient's aggression so patient may start behaving in an aggressive manner because the patient feels that you know people want to harm him so he becomes aggressive so it tries to justify his aggressive behavior and also it provides target for patient's hostility so he may target these people so this is again a very important concept of pseudo community which was described by cameron which may occur in delusional disorders now let's talk about some other psychodynamic factors now in delusional disorders especially paranoid patients may have lack of trust in relationship that is distrust may be there in relationship so the hypothesis which have been proposed for delusional disorder is that due to consistently hostile family environment so because of hostile family environment the person can develop delusions especially and in fact commonly if there is a over controlling mother and a distant or a sadistic father then in those children in those people they may develop delusional disorder so this is one important psychodynamic factor that is role of family dynamics may also eventually lead to delusion so this is one hypothesis which have been proposed and this suspiciousness of you know patient's uh, trust or his distrust you know can also be seen you know when we see through the lens of eric erickson's concept so we know eric erickson you know gave certain stages and one of the stages is trust versus mistrust so you know in the early development so in this trust versus mistrust when a person never had you know healthy experience of needs which is satisfied by the outer providers in those people they may develop delusions so this is one important concept of family dynamics in delusional disorder now let's talk about some other psychodynamic factors that is defense mechanism so we already discussed some of the defense mechanisms can lead to development of delusions so important defense mechanisms which are seen to be you know implicated in delusions is projection denial and reaction formation so these may lead to delusions so in projection as we discussed the person projects his own anger hostility on to others basically to protect themselves from recognizing their own unacceptable impulses so in a in a defense to you know 
identify or recognize their own impulses they are projecting these impulses onto someone else that is projection which leads to subsequent development of delusion the next is denial in denial they use denial to avoid awareness of painful reality so there may be painful reality you no know, painful conflicts may be there and they use denial to escape those painful realities and even in reaction formation it is used as a defense against aggression dependence needs and they are converted into the opposite into independence so again reaction formation may be used as a defense for development of delusion so these are some important defense mechanisms which one may use for development of delusions so the next important etiological factor is the cognitive theory so this cognitive theory has been you know proposed by cognitive and experimental psychologists and it says that there may be certain cognitive or you know errors in thinking or there is some cognitive errors which may ultimately lead to delusions so patients with persecutory delusions it is seen that they selectively may attend to threatening information so many information have been given to them they may just focus on the threatening information and subsequently it may lead to delusions they may jump to conclusions on insufficient information this also we had discussed when we were discussing schizophrenia that you know in formation of delusion sometimes the person just jump to the conclusion without taking all the information so that may lead to so this error of judgment that may lead to development of delusions so basically what happens the person attributes negative events to external personal causes and difficulty in contemplating others intention so these factors ultimately may lead to development of delusions also another you know hypothesis which is postulated for the development of delusion is the patient may have preferential recall of threatening events so he may just preferentially or selectively just recall some of the threatening events so many things happened in the past the person but recalls these threatening events and ultimately may lead to development of delusions so these were some of the important theories which have been proposed now there are also some important risk factors which have been seen which increase the risk of development of delusion some of these risk factors again we don't have exact pathogenesis but it has been seen that in many of these situations there is an increased risk of development of delusional disorders so the first is sensory impairment now it is seen that patients who are you know deaf or who are visually impaired in these people there may be increased risk of delusion so again if there is a sensory deprivation suppose someone is not able to see clearly because of let us take an example because of darkness so the person may become you know persecuted the person may be suspicious so you can understand it like this so in these people you know having these impairment it has been seen that there may be increase in delusional disorder then even in social isolation and recent migration immigration again there may be increased risk of delusions again you know in recent immigration there may be limited ability to learn new language you may not be able to know what people are talking around or what is happening around in those situations also there may be a increased risk of delusions then advanced age again advanced age may increase vulnerability to develop delusions so advanced age is also a risk factor for development of delusional disorder having a family history of delusional disorder again increases the risk and certain personality features which a person may have 